Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's we'll be reviewing the Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit Reserve. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Doug Smith Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in American Fork, Utah, for giving me some time with this Grand Cherokee. I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. I'll also include a link to my car buying guide. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a 3.6 liter V6 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs, being about 290 horsepower and then about 260 pound feet of torque. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So, starting with the hood, the new Grand Cherokee is a lot boxier compared to the previous gen, which I like the new style. Especially these headlights. I think those are really sharp looking. And then I love the finish here on the grill with this package. And then same thing with the trim at the bottom. Really good looking. Got the fog lights and all that. But yeah, overall, it's a cool looking car so far. Now on the side here, our tire wheel setup is 275 by 45 by 21 on the front and over in the rear. And you can see here with the wheels, you've got the metallic green. Very intricate design. I mean, look at that. That is fancy looking. Got these nice painted fender flares. This also has air suspension, by the way. Grand Cherokee there on the side. And then just like the Range Rovers, they've gone for a two-tone design. Black roof and then the white bottom. Pretty cool. And this leads us to the key fob. It's very boxy like the Jeep itself. Uh, but yeah, lock and unlock, remote start, opening for the hatch. Pretty straightforward setup. And popping into the rear, tons of storage space in the back. So definitely a practical vehicle. And then see here underneath, got the spare tire. Another nice feature. But yeah, with the regular Grand Cherokee, this is why you get it, because you've got a ton of cargo space. When you're all done, just press that, and that will lower the hatch right back down. And then you got the cool new taillight design that goes across. You got your little Summit badge there at the bottom, and there's the rest of the rear. Now this, of course, leads us inside. Soft touch trim here at the top. We've got a little sunshade as well. Look at the wood trim down below. Love all the cross stitching and everything there. Nice windows automatic and then some speakers here for the sound system. And they even do stitching here lower down, which is pretty cool. But here are the seats. Preferred it all down the center portion. And then popping inside, got a storage pocket. We've got our own climate zone back here, heated and ventilated seats. We've got USB ports as well. Uh, and then headroom back here with the boxy design is good. And then this leads us up front. So again, you can see here with the nice soft touch trim and then also down below. All of our window controls, notice that they're all automatic. You get your mirror adjustment set up. Memory seat functionality, massage seat, blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. And then here's the front seat. Perforated all down the center. All the adjustments there on the side. And then you can see here with the stitching. Nice little wood trim there, and the steering wheel's power adjustable. Now, take a look at the steering wheel. You can see soft touch all around. You've got the wood trim here as well, stitching on the airbag cover. And then we have stuff like adaptive cruise control with lane centering. Got controls for the center as well. Paddle shifters and radio controls on the back. And then just regular old stocks there. Digital gauge cluster with the new Grand Cherokee. It's cool how you can kind of change the format of it. But yeah, you can see basic vehicle information <laughs> and also night vision. It takes forever to load up, by the way. Fascinating. Don't know if I'd ever use night vision, but um, you do have the drive mode that'll pop up here in the center too, which gives you kind of a fun animation. 360 camera system. Pretty cool set up if you ask me and then that's the rest of the infotainment system it's quick to respond for the most part it does take a second for some of these pages to load up look at that oh, too bad and then you've got physical buttons at the top like auto stop start lane departure stability control hazard lights parking sensors parking assist and then that's to turn on that screen yes there's a passenger screen with this tons of tech and then Heated and ventilated seats down below with your dual zone climate controls and radio controls and all of that. And then charging area below that, which you can cover up with this little tab here. And then this is kind of the drive mode control stack. So you actually have your drive modes right there. 
and then you've got the transmission selector and then that's for the air suspension to raise and lower it and this does have four wheel drive flow we also have hill descent control got some cup holders here and then center console set up I like the trim here on the top same thing with the dash and then heads up display by the way but yeah really nice all across pretty good storage there camera rear view mirror and then we've got nice trim here up top and then panoramic center so here's our one sticker for this 2025 Grand Cherokee 7 Reserve. Got a few packages like the high altitude. Anyways, 70,630 is a total MSRP on this. And let's see how it performs. Well, Grand Cherokee Summit Reserve. And this is a nice car with a fancy fancy headliner big sunroof I mean it's got so much equipment but uh, in this video or in the driving section of this video I guess I should say I do want to talk about Jeep's situation a little bit because it's no secret Jeep's Jeep's struggling a little bit maybe a lot of it so I kind of I kind of want to talk about the Grand Cherokee because this you know is this and the Wrangler are the bread and butter for Jeep, and both of those vehicles are struggling their own way, but I feel like the Grand Cherokee especially so. And so since we're driving a fancy Grand Cherokee, we'll talk about it in today's video. But let's focus on the driving dynamics first for those of you that just care about how this drives. The air suspension, really cool. I love air suspension systems when they're working, of course, right? That is something that is always a concern right how long is it gonna last for but it just it, it makes the damping so much better really really smooth setup speaking of setup looks like the mitsubishi store is getting set up um, yeah, i mean this is nice i mean i got massaging seats so i press that boom got a massage going on now and the seats are comfortable and this interior i mean it's it i think this is nice to look at like the trim and everything this is the this really is the nicest grand cherokee they've ever made and that's the thing that's so fascinating about the situation is and i know some people will say that they like the wk more but this new wl i just think the interior looks way nicer than the wk it drives better it looks better in the exterior it's just objectively it is a better vehicle in a lot of different ways the only way that it hasn't made an improvement is just the powertrain department you've actually lost powertrains with this generation and I mean, like, look at this. This is a loaded up one and it still has a sub 300 horsepower V6. So it's kind of interesting how they've done that. But really comfortable drive. Like, this is a luxury car. And you'd hope so for $70,000. But <laughs> funny enough, this is actually a price decrease. I mean, these used to be the summer reserves were like 80 grand. Now they're down to 70 because Jeep has corrected uh, all of their pricing on their vehicles. But yeah, I mean, it drives well. I'll show you guys the acceleration here in just a moment. And then we'll talk about the juicy stuff. Fun, fun, juicy stuff. Yeah, so smooth. I mean, yeah, the, the powertrains... I'm going to let this truck go in front of me. Um, the powertrains... Very, very sharp in terms of how it performs as a, you know, NAV6. And a big part of that's the transmissions. Very quick with the shifts. I agree with that. For how little power this has, it does well. So let's talk about Jeep. Now, when I was selling the product, this was like the peak of Jeep. They were, so big that everyone's talking about let's have a bunch of standalone jeep dealers because it's like there's so many of these jeeps to be sold and there's just not enough of them and now just you know five-ish years later it's like there's so many jeeps stacking up dealer lots they're they're uh not knowing what to do with all of them and, and they are still selling like the people that say they aren't selling just go look at the sales figures they are still selling just in smaller amounts and so my thought is a few things. So first off, yeah, the pricing definitely got out of hand. A lot of manufacturers did that over the course of the last few years. 
Um, but now they've, they've brought their pricing down. So, you know, they've done the right thing on that side of things. But pricing aside, I think there's two big issues with the Grand Cherokee specifically right now. Um, first is powertrains. They just don't have enough powertrain options. I mean, again, go back in time to when I was selling these, you could get a, this person shouldn't be crossing. You could get a Grand Cherokee with a 3.6 liter V6. You could get it with a 6.4 Hemi. You could get it with a 5.7 Hemi. You could get it with a Hellcat engine. So you had a bunch of different powertrain options for all sorts of different uses. Whereas now you have the V6 and then you've got the hybrid and the hybrids had so many issues that people don't even want to touch it. So powertrain apartment is lacking and I think that's causing issues. So Jeep needs to have more powertrain options with this. So the new Hurricane inline six, I think that's the one that everyone's just sitting and waiting to be put into more cars. Uh, it first started in the Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer, and now it's in the Ram 1500. And I'm sure it'll make its way into the Wrangler and into the Grand Cherokee. and. I think that'll cause uh, some level of revival. So that's the first part is there just needs to be more powertrain options again. The other part is competition. So again, just like the Wrangler, this didn't have a lot of competition back in the day. Like seriously, if you wanted a larger two row SUV, there wasn't a lot out there. But now let me name all of the larger two row SUVs that you can buy. The new Land Cruiser, the new Lexus GX 550, uh, the new Forerunner that's coming out. So those are all Toyota products. Uh, Honda with the Passport, Mazda with the CX 70, Chevy with the Blazer. And <laughs> that's just a few, but then you can go, you know, Santa, the new Santa Fe, uh, the new Kia um, Sorento and Land Rover with the Defender. Like there's so many vehicles that kind of cross over price wise, um, kind of what they're doing lifestyle wise, similar to the Grand Cherokee. And so with all that crossover, there's so much competition now where there wasn't. So it's like the Grand Cherokee kind of had monopoly five years ago, six years ago, but now it's got tons of competition. Uh, and so I think those are really the two biggest things that are going against the Grand Cherokee right now. Because again, I think this is the best Grand Cherokee ever made. Like seriously, the equipment that this is uh, this has, how it looks, how it drives is so, so good. Just those two things, powertrain and then there's more competition. So the powertrain department, Jeep can fix. Competition, they can't. So they've just got to, um, you know, do what they can to make the Jeep as unique in, in the segment as they can to entice people to buy it. And, you know, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think Jeep should do. I kind of lean towards like focusing more on off-road because Jeep has, so much know-how in the off-road world like this luxury stuff's really cool uh, but i think jeep focusing on off-road and then performance because they did the srt stuff which was really fun i think if they did a heavier focus on that rather than luxury i think that could help i'm horrible at parking as always but yeah let me know what your thoughts are on the summit reserve